So let's have some questions. Start down here. I mean, maybe if all the, the people who presented would kind of be around here. Thank you for your presentations. Uh, it's been great to me learning about these amazing projects. And I understand that these projects are being implemented in countries where democracy already exists. Do you know any experience or advice or do you know any initiatives um, that is designed for closed society like Vietnam where democracy doesn't exist but the internet and smartphone is very, very popular? And especially for Hong Kong, I, I want to ask the Hong Kong team that democracy in Hong Kong is going backward and getting closer and closer to the situations in China and Vietnam. Do, what is your vision where um, one day that Hong Kong will be just like Vietnam? And what is your vision? What is, um, how to get people to participate in um, politic, uh, politics using uh, civic touch? Thank you very much. So thank you for your question. Uh, it is true that in Hong Kong, the democracy is um, in a decrease because the government um, is working very hard to crack down any civic uh, uh, activities. Um, if you have heard recently, Joshua Wong, Wong the face of um, the Occupy movement or Umbrella movement, he's in jail right now. He's going to spend his 21st uh, birthday there. Um, and um, uh, a lot of the other leaders are either in jail or they will be uh, charged later, including um, the mentor of our project, uh, Professor Benny Dai. So um, what we do is basically, um, what we do is not very different from other civic society. Um, it, it's just that, uh, just as uh, Firo had uh, mentioned before, the um, opposition has uh, employed many, many different tactics to, to attack us or to diminish us. So uh, we're always uh, on the look for uh, new ways of um, being influenced or cracked, do uh, cracked down. Um, for example, the first time we ran the election, we kind of like employ a su surprise tactic. So we were really in a low profile about our technology, our process and stuff like that. It was um, only on the last days of the elections, uh, before the election, we released um, the app and, um, and then we help people uh, rehearse how to use the apps. Um, that helped um, the first time because the government didn't understand our tactic at the time. Um, but the, the it didn't help the second time because they were, they came very prepared, and um, you know as you can see in 2014 the government, uh, or the pro government organizations used um, the DDoS attack, a very brute force attack. But this time they used a smear campaign, which was really really um, successful because um, what we have found is that people. Um, the general public, they don't understand technology very well, and there's a fear about privacy issue and technology when they hear about something that they don't understand. It's more complex than, than they could uh, comprehend. They tend to just stay very conservative. So um, I guess our lesson learned was um, always think about how do you uh, go one more step, um, do something that the government didn't expect, um, and the other way is basically um, always communicate with your uh, user base um, so that they're uh, on top of your strategy, your technology, and stuff like that to increase participation. I, I was pretty amazed by uh, the, the gaming tactics that they have uh, to actually lure uh, the opposition when they try to attack us. You told me one story yesterday. So they have this telegram bot where they do deliberation, and they have like the opposition coming trolling, they identify them and they pull all them together in the same chat room and they discover it at the end of the debate or uh, when we were at OGP. Yeah. Uh, the first use of Telegram we thought was like uh, making uh, uh, several chatbots uh, uh, using like games uh, in order to vote because the idea was not to do a civil referendum at the time but nominating candidates but just saying if you are against or for a candidate, and we were thinking of a game to just like trash uh, the the candidate, saying if you are against him, you you throw a tomato. If you and doing games, so they can't really know which one to attack. So it's really uh, what I, I did. I discovered that with them is like you have to uh, enhance participation and also uh, have a, a really uh, strategical uh, way of approaching. 
uh, the, 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 the whole thing because you know you're going to be attacked by the opposition, so it has to be inside your, your plan. to this matter as well because I think it's a very interesting issue and just let me to advertise tomorrow roundtable we'll discuss about <laughs> CVTEC and uh, its uh, relationship with the struggling democracy in Asia but I just want to say that uh, in Taiwan it's interesting to notice uh, Cup Zero established in 2012 but it's not that famous it's become famous since 2014, the Sunflower Movement. So in Asia, you find that civic tech community grown faster after some kind of crisis, rather than in a time without crisis. So I, I would rather to think uh, civic tech is not all about how to collaborate with government. Sometimes in a situation, maybe in Asia, uh, the democracy is young, or so maybe there's no uh, real democracy at all. Civitech can still collaborate with uh, NGOs, activists to do a different kind of activities. So I think there's a potential uh, potentialities of Civitech not only with government. Yeah. Question? Yeah. I think uh, we're just. Uh, this will be a quick one because then we have lunch. But yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, I just have a question, possibly for the sp the, the first presentation, but maybe. Someone else can speak to it. Um, citizen participation, civic engagement, all that sort of stuff, um, you know, requires a bunch of ingredients like even the, the digital literacy and all the tools, etc. But there's the social contract between government and citizens, um, and there's no point in citizens engaging if there's no trust that government is going to be responding. Um, I've seen it firsthand. I think you guys have seen a similar thing. Um, has, was there any challenge uh, on your side with regards to the Taiwan and all those tools? Or was it just that there's such a willing government to, to participate that actually there was a two-way communication? Uh, so I think that's maybe one. Cool. Fee, do you want to speak to that? Okay. So basically, all these tools actually come up after uh, 2014, so it's after the Sunflower Movement. So um, we have, oh no, I, I know that our report is really huge, so I'm going to make this quick. So actually what happened is that after uh, Sunflower Movement, there is um, awareness of from the citizen about transparency and also uh, how to, uh, citizen wants to engage more about policy making and they approach, put a lot of pressure to the government. So the outbreak of the movement actually lead to that uh, to the uh, government have to respond to this kind of um, critics. So actually they come up with the Taiwan after that movement. So this is the uh, why the government are willing to respond. But I have to say that some uh, uh, government of officials that uh, on the certain positions, they are willing to open up and they want to respond to the to critics and citizens' opinions. But some, they are like more like um, they try to be, like they try to pretend the openness, but they are not really doing it. And we also discussed that a lot on, in our report. And uh, But I think that uh, on, this, on, um, on the scale of these toys, uh, tools, you can see that um, at least after 2015, the government trying to be more responsive. But and even though we have this like I voting, we have that join platform, we have V Taiwan. Like in our cases, we don't think that's enough. We think that even though we have voting system, we have like you can propose, but there's only like uh, we propose something and government feedback. There's no collaborative after that, and there's no actually co collaborating and policy making and planning as well. So we, that's not enough. Uh, there's also contrast that we are tr still trying to push um, the government to do more. And now the crisis we have now in 2017 is that after the election that happened last year, uh, actually um, the the government uh, well the sunflower movement happened. Uh, is being turned down. There is another new government. So this new government doesn't really have that pressure from the, the they don't feel the pressure from the public anymore. So they don't have the motive, motive to, do, to be more transparent. So it's actually being more difficult to us than ever to push this transparency in the government now.
Thank you. Well, that's all we have time for. Can we just give a big round of applause for our excellent panel and also our questions?